Hey everybody, it's Jamie from the Marine Doctor's YouTube channel. And today, we'll be looking at a 115 Johnson that's running rough and is low on power. Let's go take a look. some compression numbers on here 110 110 115 so obviously someone's been in here doing some work looks like it's got a new starter in it reeks of dead gas so we're going to do what we always do first is we're going to pull the spark plugs out do a compression test of my own i'm not, not going to trust those numbers i don't know when they were done and then spark test at the same time New spark plugs. He's random on the new spark plugs, which is fantastic. Level it. All right, there they are. So we've got one, two, three that look like they're firing in some form or some fashion. And that one looks like it's just there for a ride. So we could potentially have an ignition problem, which is just sending fuel directly through that cylinder, not igniting it and sending it out the engine, which would represent that nice, clean plug that we see. Pressure tester. Spark checker. I typically check, test two, two cylinders at a time. spark on one cylinder. I'm hoping that's what you guys have seen as well. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to swap these leads out. Just to make sure that I don't have a lead issue. Spin it over again. All right. So I have ignition, which you guys already know. 
on the top cylinder, but nothing on the bottom. But one other thing that worries me a little bit is the fact that I had over 125, 130 pounds of pressure on the bottom, but the top one, I'm gonna redo it. When I see numbers like 110 and 115 on these engines, I'm concerned. So we're 115. So to those of you that think 115 is enough, all right, before we get started, I want to show you guys these firm grip utility gloves. So this is typical of what I wear daily when I'm here. These actually are brand new ones. Uh, you can buy them at Home Depot. Fantastic deal. They work up to be about five bucks uh, per set. And they come in sets of four, sometimes sets of three. It's cheaper as four. But yeah, pick these up, I'll have a link below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and loosen these, and then I'm gonna spin them out with my DeWalt drill. So yeah, I may as well show you this. This is the DeWalt 20 volt cordless drill that I use. It's a little impact driver, and I've got a half inch bit in here that's lasted for a couple of years. I won't have a link to this in the descriptions below because I bought it at a pawn shop. Another item sold from Home Depot, I'll have a link in the, in the description below, GRK fasteners. So they're deck screws, and this is the container that they come in. They sell out, these get thrown away. I just managed to find them somehow. So I'm gonna take these bolts out of here and drop them in. And you, you may ask, why do I use a, oh, check this out. That's that cylinder we said that wasn't firing, right? Broken wire leading to that coil. Somebody's hit the hood on it a few times and uh, knocked it loose. All right, so that's all of those. I'll let you guys have a look firsthand as soon as I pop that open. All right, all the bolts are out. I went ahead and disconnected some wires while the video wasn't running. Uh, this is the sending unit for heat, and this is the coil wires that I disconnected. If you look down inside there, we have another issue where one set of pins is pushed down, so it may or may not be making contact with the little boot that uh, gets inserted inside. All right, so I have not looked inside. We're gonna be seeing this firsthand each. So what do we got in there? Let's go ahead and we'll spin this flywheel up. And we're gonna be looking for damage around the outside of the piston, for one. If we don't see anything on the outside of the piston, we unfortunately do. So I'm just gonna take my glove off here. If you look in this top corner here, we can see that there is a broken piece of piston. So what we're gonna do is we'll spin that piston down and we'll take a look inside that cylinder and see what we see. All right. So we've got the piston moved down right now and we're looking for the damage inside. And if we look where that little chip was out of the top of the piston, we can see that we're scored where that piston's been moving up and down. So what I'm gonna have to do now is get a hold of the customer and let them know that we've got mechanical damage as well as that spark problem that, that we were well, hoping that's all it was going to be, but unfortunately not. So I, I like to always make sure that I do a compression test along with a spark test to make sure that I'm not spending money for the fella that doesn't necessarily need to be spent. All right, there we have it. So we've got a 115 that had idling problems as well as top speed. 
And we were hoping it was just going to be an electronics problem, but unfortunately it's not. We had 115 pounds compression on one cylinder and 135 on the others, which led me to believe that there was going to be mechanical damage. And indeed there was. So next step for me is to get on the phone, talk to the customer and let them know the details.